Hey guys, welcome back to the Ice Project. Today is going to be a sort of a, a special edition, sort of a farewell edition to my guy, Vintage Jackson. Um, currently in his last two days here at work. So just going to sort of talk about experiences he's had with YKTR, um, his future moving forward. So first of all, just want to say very proud of you. Thanks, bro. Get a new goal. Continue. Um, I'm just Obviously, adjusting. you didn't mention in the podcast that you're leaving for money as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not leaving for money. Money comes when you leave. It's yeah. just, you know. Yeah, I'm not leaving for less money, but yeah. So, stitch me up like that. No, it actually makes me proud that um, people are coming into into this sort of place and leaving with better positions yeah. or better opportunities. So it sort of makes me proud as a business owner, but obviously going to be sad to see you leave. Love having you hanging around the office. Yeah, I think it should, bro. Like we kind of, Scope was talking about it this morning, like whether it's Caleb or Simi like in his own way, but like if you, it's a sign that you and Lukey and kind of the, the brand is doing the right thing. If people are, you know, sick, you're, services are being seconded elsewhere and mm. you know people reaching out to Caleb and getting him to do cool shit for them and obviously this job's come about for me and it wouldn't have come about if I was still doing what I was doing before because I applied a million times and they wouldn't take me <laughs> so, <laughs> so oh really oh yeah bro I've been gunning for this job for a minute so oh. like for a bit of context um the former uh, the, the role one of the roles that I'm sort of rolling into is going to be a, sort of a dotted line handling a bit of the media for the for the warriors and they've had a guy there who has been amazing for my career, Richard Beck, for a long time. He's still going to be there um, in exactly what capacity. I'm not too sure yet. But um, I was gunning for his job for like four years while I was at the Warriors. So I used to meet with Cameron and try and whisper in his ear. I was like, I think he's getting on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to hang him up. And um, yeah. anyway, they didn't really have a job for me. And I was, and then I hustled you for a fucking job for two years. And, um, and then, yeah, it only came about because they said, hey, we like what you do there. Yeah, the media management stuff is obviously you can do it, but – we want more of a communications manager to come in and handle our sort of external comms and all that. And I said, oh, kind of what do you mean? They said, basically what you do at YKDR. So it know, is a testament to you in terms of like, I wouldn't have got the job if I wasn't here. Do they know that you got some no, um, non-competes in your contract? Yeah, they don't know that yet, but uh, <laughs> what contract? Yeah, man? we don't have a contract. So I think we need to have contracts. I do. I got one when oh, I started. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got one from Natasha, yeah. so There's a non-compete clause, is there? Yeah, you can fucking PDF edit that shit. All right, so uh, the WAS, obviously um, – Soft, uh, own a little place in your heart and also my heart where yeah. I sort of grew up and I know the importance of what the Warriors mean to the country and especially when they're going well. Mm. Now, your job is not reflective of what they do on the field, but it's how you're, you're basically the war between the club and yeah. the public. Yeah, me and the right. team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and the team. Sorry. Yeah. Um, how do you see it changing over the next couple of years? What do you see in the past that they're doing well? Because over the past couple of years, I feel like their quarantine has been visually really cool. Yeah. What's I was going to say that. We've always said that, yeah. Um, I think their merch always looks fucking sick and they're a one-team sort of town or country. Yeah. Where do you see the growth in, in the space where you're heading? Yeah, I think we've – like I've been pretty blessed and lucky in the space that we operate in a, an emerging sports media business. That's what I do every day. So I'm kind of just going to take exactly what I've been, been doing with you guys over there and um, and put it into a sports club because we, we spoke about for ages – different ways we thought football departments or not football departments, sports organizations could handle their external comms. And a lot of it is just doing it yourself. So uh, historically or traditionally clubs and organizations have been so reliant on the media to get their messages out or tell their stories. And when you get that gross butting of heads between players and journos and media outlets and stuff like that, it blurs the line. Then fans get this perception of, Oh, he's a dick or, or, you know, this club's, being run like you know like a fucking zoo or whatever and it's not necessarily well, in fact it's very rarely the whole story so i just want to be part of a team that obviously the aesthetic and the visual of the warriors is already cool doubling down on it's that sick. it's, it's sick. sick and yeah. that's obviously like testament to guys like timmy and that that came into their thing and really stamped their mark on it and dozzy's going to do his own version of that um but then beyond that just connecting back with the people so it's obviously the first time in two years three years that the boys are going to be based at home so despite going home uh, last year for a few games now they're going to be in new zealand few activations up and down the country and just reconnecting with that side of things. Obviously I can't control what they do on the pitch. So yeah. um, at the end of the day, they you got to, got to <laughs> win games, um, but I'm confident they will this year. So I like yeah. their team, bro. They look good. Yeah, they look good. A few good pickups. Uh, the rookie coach is sort of going to be the exciting one. Yeah. I haven't, I've had ne never had anything to do with him. So part of kind of my first week or two is just going to be getting in there and explaining who I am, what I do. I know, a few of the boys, but a lot of them I don't know. Like um, Most uh, of the boys will know who you are now. Yeah, right? yeah. Or, or we cool. know of each other, but I don't necessarily know them. Like I know of Chance, but I've never actually had a conversation with him. Oh, like, you're the nicest bloke in the world. Yeah, yeah, so guys like that I don't know. Um, 
but I'll deal with that. And then obviously Webby, I got to meet him and just let him know. Look, I'm I'm only here to to basically make your job easier. So you focus on the fucking X's and O's of footy, mm. and I'll make you look like a million bucks. So yeah, that's the play. You play uh, like a million, I'll make you look like fucking two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything on you want to talk about? Of a couple of things you want to like. You got a couple of ideas, and we've talked about them off air. Yeah, I've been kind of soundboarding you. Like nothing hard. It's going to be a bit of a planning week when we first get there. I've got ideas, obviously. Like that's why I kind of got the role is I pitched them on a few different things. But um, like I legitimately do kind of want to do what we do here, but um, for the, an organization. What you talked about before, they call it own media. So yeah. like you own your own media, and the way it distributes out. I think that's just going to be a standard practice. For, so do I, bro. For every um, brand or every club, sort of moving forward, where they control the narratives and. I reckon a lot of them eventually, and I, I know the Tigers have got this, mm. will have a podcast studio like this. Bro, the Tigers one's sick. Is yeah, it? It's yeah. fucking mad. So they like, so again, in full full disclosure, like I, I was chatting to the Tigers about potentially doing some like, because you're always going chase, you know, get side buns and do your thing outside of work. So I was wondering if I could do some stuff. The whole thing with the Warriors was I was going to do some stuff after hours for them, just like website copy. Yep. I was going to do the same thing with the Tigers, hopefully. Um and so he goes, oh, you love this. And I went and had a look at their – that's why I saw yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, went and had a look at their their studio. It's fucking elite. But like, to your point, I think that's the way it's going to go. And I'm excited to potentially be part of – not the first club that's going to do it, but I think we could do it the best. Well, I know we can because we got the right people in there already yeah. and the boys have bought in, which is a big part. Like yeah. a few senior players who are already – I think that like when you were playing, it was like the crossing over period of like you had the old heads who didn't really want to fuck with the new media and podcasts and stuff like that. And then you started to do it and obviously built this and blokes like Denon and stuff. Um, but the younger generation of players, they this is all they've kind of known. Mm. So um, it's a lot easier to to get them to do an interview and or do a podcast or let me follow you with a camera when you go to coffee. Whereas I dare say even when I was a junior, even like six, seven, eight years ago, it was quite hard to – to break that wall because the trust just wasn't there. You know what I mean? Yeah, agree. And like someone like a Shawnee Johnson, like you would have been there when the whole world was, the whole country was on his shoulder. So yeah. he'd give off really close answers. But there's a lot of times I've seen him on Fox Sports where they'd pin something on him straight away. Like you guys are going into lockdown or you guys are taken away. Yeah. And just a natural reaction of hearing Shawnee talk and just being vulnerable and open. I He's thought, the best, bro. Yeah, I think Shawnee was – like he was a perfect person to ask. Him and I never got like professionally. We never got on like great. We did certainly didn't like not get along. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I'm excited. It's a slimy journey. Yeah, you know, that's I, what it I, is, he had bro. just been like, you got to think. Bef- this was pre Sharks, Shawnee. So he was like, you want to talk about a fucking scapegoat or a punching bag? Like anything that went wrong at the club, he was the first person you asked. Like anything went right, he got all the praise. Yep. Like as well he should because he was obviously responsible for it yeah. most of the time. But um. <laughs> But like his whole exit, like that was a saga that I'll never forget in terms of like being on this side of the camera, just like knowing full well what I was about to write and how I was going to do it and just seeing like an actual, it's different. It's a hard experience, but like when you're a journalist, sometimes, and it does sound gross, but sometimes you don't see them as the person, you kind of just see the athlete yeah. and you're reporting a lot on X's and O's and they kind of become those X's and O's, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, for sure. So like to see him and Sean's like an emotional dude and to see like, fighting back tears and explaining his decision. And I was like, I just felt yuck. I just, yeah. I just didn't like it. And obviously, you know, we've come full circle now and we're over here, but. Um, yeah. So we we're back doing life at YKTR. Is that something that could roll yeah. straight off the bat with, with the Waz? There will be a podcast hundred percent and there'll be some sort of vlog. Um, I already know Dodsy's keen. Yep. Um, whether it's like a, uh, I think the way that we do life now, as in like literally the last episode is how I'd want to do it, bro. Keep it simple, keep it short, keep it punchy. Just show people what goes on day to day, yeah. whether it's riveting and it's going to be the best episode of all time or whether it's just another fucking week, if it's just a round four week and you're, you're two and two. One, like, yeah, and I, I think what you realize around here is like a lot of the things like you take for granted now or I take for granted is usually the best content. Yeah. Like us just sitting out there talking about Chico for for like 20 minutes as a giggle. Yeah. Or like I think that's the little where – I think that's where the magic lies in content where what I see in sports content right now is very polished. Yeah. So Warriors stuff's very polished. Him coming off the bus, slow-mos, all the filters. I think there's a place for that, definitely. For yeah. sure. But yeah. that's like – that's what you put on your main page. But that sort of behind the scenes of yeah. Chance getting strapped on his first day and Mad. just having a chat with the with the physio guy. Yeah. Uh, like uh, there's magic in that and – I always see the photo of the boys walking out towards training because they train on the backfield. Yeah. Like, what are they? What are the boys saying? Yeah. That's. I think there's some magic. Like the polished stuff looks great, 
But like, what are they saying in those situations where I think we guys could really take off the weekly podcast? That's just going to be a standard thing soon. So I think every club sh- will not should be doing. I think they will do it by you give it two or three years. It should almost be like Matty Johns on the couch, like that, like this, this. two, three players. Yep. We've got player of the day last week, up and coming, guy. cycle them in and out. Yeah, because the boys will get obviously they've they're high performing professional athletes. So like there, there is a fucking drain in terms of like what I can ask them to do. Mm. So finding that balance is going to be tough too. And like you've, you've worked in footy clubs, like media managers, like it's hit and miss in terms of like the respect they garner. Like there's a little bit of like, you've got to be up beat. You've got to be an upbeat. Yeah. So like, I'll be okay like that, but it's going to be, it's going to be an adjustment, like coming from a position where I'm just like, we're all just mates. Like it's pretty fucking, obviously like we have a boss, but it's pretty cruisy to a position where, there might be tough conversations that need to be had. Like, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not like my bread and butter, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. You're going to get told to fuck off some days, which yeah, is all right. That's You're okay. Right. I can cop that. I've been, I was told, told that. Fuck, yeah. I've been told that a fair few times. So it's all G. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, obviously you're a big fan of American sports. Is there, have you been looking over there for inspiration in terms of content? I know you look yeah. at. I like uninterrupted. Like I like what LeBron does or that, um, that company, I think it's actually a KD one, Uninterrupted. Boardrooms. Um, Boardrooms KD. KD uninterrupted oh, okay. LeBron. LeBron, yeah. Um, I like that as a concept in terms of active players producing content, like Draymond or or guys who are actually in the game doing what we're doing now. Like it, it would have been fucking sick if while you were like balls deep in footy to be doing what you were doing. Obviously you're tired because you juggling a million different things. But and like, no one had done it then too. That's what so I mean. there wasn't like kind of this example. Yeah, like, now oh, you've got a North like, Star. Yeah. yeah. What what I reckon will happen in sports, bro, um, will be kind of like us. So there'll be like a group of us, so say me, Chico, Normi, and then like Cheese comes on and Mace and yeah. comes on. There'll be like little pockets of media companies that um, – no limits, probably a good example. Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, of there's just going to be these little pockets of self-contained media, um, business guys like two five seven, probably had a real good chance to make it. Like past and to, present, sort of yeah. covering over everything. Yeah, I like that. I think that's the way it's going to move forward, and hopefully it weasels out a lot of like player managers too. I think it will, bro. And the cool thing about like a club like the Warriors is there's such a connectivity between the past players as well. So like they're always knocking about, they're always interested in getting involved with shit. So it's not going to be a hard ask to be like if you had like an idea to obviously do something with the current group and then once or twice a week you want to do something nostalgic, the cunts pick up the phone and yeah. <laughs> we'll come straight down running. So you got white on your corporate just hanging on the yeah. phone. Like, looking like Monty Beatham started following me today. Oh, so did he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't fuck off Monty. He'll fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, he's always been nice to me. But and yeah. yeah, all those – no, he's, he's a legend. Yeah. Um, yeah, all those ex-Warriors guys, like once you're a part of that crew in any capacity, probably helps a little bit if you're played. Yeah. Uh, but if, if they see you're generally trying to put in and try and make the club better – is it, when the Warriors are flying, there's no place better. And that's it, bro. I mean, you'd know that better than me, but like as a fan, I agree 100%. You obviously played and you played at a time when you guys were fucking we were pretty, always winning, pretty yeah. good. Every so, grade, we were yeah. winning everything. So. so it's a different buzz, bro. And like, and I've like, I obviously jump on the sports show and try and get 30 minutes of Warriors chatting every week. So like everyone knows I'm a, I'm a fan first and I was never gifted enough to play footy, which I know shocks people, but um my thing in my head was always like, okay, well, how can I possibly, I wanted to be at every single Warriors game, like mm-hmm. ever since I was fucking five years old. And I was like, okay, well, I can't afford season tickets <laughs> and I'm not going to be able to play. So how can I do it? So journalism was my way to do that. And then obviously I fell in love with storytelling more so than the actual game. Obviously I love footy, but like I love everything. everything. I love the there. theater of yeah. sport more like so than too. I love. And I love the feeling it gets when your team wins rather than like, I do love seeing a beautiful play and fucking Penrith strip someone like, don't get me wrong, but I love the Mount Smart Joker fucking scoffing a hot dog and I love like the chaos after the Tonga win or something like that. I love that. So coming over here, I was able to obviously add a few more strings to my bow and now I've got the opportunity to be where I've always wanted to be, which is at every game and I don't have to get strapped. <laughs> yeah, don't have to put the shoulders on yeah, the Yeah, so. Um, that, that'd be a good idea actually, just like a fan day experience of content. And maybe do it. like five a year where you follow Mount Smart Joker around, obviously Mad Butcher's yeah. the king of the king. Yeah. Great thing about New Zealand, we talked about this bastard. before. <laughs> 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 yeah, there'll be some editing on the Mad Butch yeah. one. Yeah. Um, one thing we talked about before is like, good thing about the Wires, they ha- have some out and out fans. Like, yeah. We were talking about Manly and Hello Sport. Roosters don't really have that. The Isaac John. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to sneak in there. I'm trying to get on the board one day. But it's a colourful club. There's people, colourful people all around it. But like the coolest thing for me is obviously just amazing opportunity. And I'm like pumped to go there and work with people I know who 
like I'm a, I'm wanted. You're, s- you're set. I'm you, set. You, I'm you, a wanted commodity. You've got the resources yeah. to do fucking something great. So that's a, like it's both exciting. That's exactly what I was going to get to. It's a little bit nerve wracking in the sense of like there's no excuses. Like versus like when I came here, we were like we had no hard and fast plan. We were no. kind of just like we're like oh we both think the same. Oh, Lukey thinks the same. Oh yeah, here's a job. Let's just figure it out. And we did. Yeah. But like over there, I'm coming into kind of like a ready-made product with scope to do whatever the fuck I want. So it's exciting, but there's certainly pressure, which I haven't had. Not I haven't had because there's obviously pressure every fucking day, but um, it's a different kind of pressure. Just and me, me Def staring you from across the room. Yeah, a different thing like having actual stakeholders to appease and yeah, corporate fans, sponsors, like, fans more than anything. Gonna be big. But we also have it here, bro. Like you kind of take that for granted, I think, like – the YKTR community, like they are just fans at the end of the day in terms of the same as like a footy club has fans. Mm. So does, so do those four letters on the wall. So I think it's been like an interesting crash course here in terms of I've learned enough transferable skills that I'm, I am genuinely going overconfident, which I have not had in most roles that I've accepted (laughs) in my life. (laughs) Certainly not this one. Fucking no. (laughs) Um, YKTR, what what have you learned from being here? Fuck. And just, we've gone through the, the like. I know you've been here for like a year and a half or two years, but there's been some cycles, hasn't it? Mm. Like we first started very tight, very unorganized, unstructured. Would like I'd rock up one day and go, "Fuck, we're making three pieces of content today," mm. just because I decided to do that. And then we scaled out, scaled back in, and then there's just like nice calmness around us at the moment. Like, mm. what's some of the biggest lessons you've learned from being here? Fuck. I, I mean, I spoke before about transferable skills. Like, I I could list off. It'd be a boring podcast if I started listing off everything I learned. But I think just in terms of coming over here, I learned the. It's the first time I've ever been involved in like a startup of any kind. <laughs> so I saw every phase of the business, bro. Like, you probably take it for granted a little bit because you've done it in obviously with YKTR, then YKTR Sports, Dice, like you've done even your online courses, like you've built shit from nothing. Mm. So it's kind of like normal to you. And But for someone like me, like I've always, if I'm landscaping, I go to a job that's half done and just pour the pebbles. I go into journalism, it's a media company, it's already done. Like I don't, you don't see how the sausage is made, you just kind of become a sausage if that yeah. makes sense. Whereas yeah. o- over here, I know every arm of how every business you work in works now, which is crazy because before I was just a guy who, I could write. Yeah. Like I came to you as a footy fan who could write and I leave as a fucking jack of all trades, master of none who I, I understand logistics now. I understand fucking marketing. I understand podcast production, which I had no idea about like basic fucking camera work. I understand editing. I understand. So everything that I had, I've just expanded upon for being here. And it's like you said, it's the old fucking wax on treatment. Yeah. It's not like you sat me down and said, today we're going to learn how to edit a podcast. Just just do it. Yeah. Like, just figure it out. It's probably the best way to learn, isn't it? I think so because it kind of happens subconsciously. Mm-hmm. Like I just sit around you boys long enough and learn how to punt from the skip. And um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you would have picked up some bad habits Fuck. here like yeah. too. It's been, a, it's been a fucking ride, bro. Like I don't know. I don't know how I. It's a fucking weird company. Bro. It's a weird company. You it's know a when weird it's just country. Your normal life. And then like yeah. people say stuff. I'm like, fuck, we live a weird life. Yeah. The little shit like. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a hard one to explain because people ask like, oh, so like a- Ash, like we're when we just go, oh, what are you doing today? I'm like, I'm not 100% sure, <laughs> but by 8.30, yeah, I I'll know. be fucking busy. So yeah. it's been fun, man. And like I've, I've just, I've seen, we've been through enough in the sense of like, I've seen what works, I've seen what doesn't work and I've seen how to react in both so like instances, you know what I mean? I've never been like in trouble before. <laughs> and I, I came over here and got in a bit of strife a few times and – um personal life fell apart and I was lucky in the sense I had you and I had these four fucking letters on the wall that I was able to just sort of, I always had somewhere where I could go and just fucking block it out, do my shit. You've seen me at my worst too. Like a lot of the stuff that, like I know we document a lot of stuff and we also don't, we also yeah. don't like we leave a lot. I always said if we documented everything would be like the car last year. Now the shit that's happened in <laughs> yeah. the scenes. Um, and even like stuff like Caleb, like it's good to see him opening up about, yeah. Like his suicide attempts and shit like that. He messaged like, me yesterday as well. Yeah. yeah. Like that was stuff that we, like personally I had to deal with. And Yeah. I I'm going to get him on and get him talking about it. It'll be a cool episode. Yeah. He's ready to go. He better not be saying that God stuff too on air. Nah, he's funny. I just want people to see me like a God. Like, yeah. No, no okay. cut it out. <laughs> he's like, he's moved, grown so much. And then oh. every now and then he's still got like a Calebism in him. And I yep. go, ah, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I caught up with him the other day too. Good luck. He's going well. So yeah, I'm th- gonna it miss- does make me proud. Like, like- should, bro. Like I'm going to miss that like i'm gonna miss 
all the different personalities and obviously like me, you, Lukey and Scope have been the dudes the whole time. Yeah. But everyone that f- has like sort of floated in and out, whether it was like, like you think we had the team rocket boys in here for a minute. We had like Simi obviously was a stable for a long time. Chico on and off, like big mace rolls, through big now. mace rolls through. Like I think people f- like, you, you kind of take it for granted when you're in it. And like you asked me this morning, like, does it feel real yet? And I was like, Oh, we still got shit to do. So yeah, probably Wednesday I'll wake up. Just be bored as fuck. <laughs> yeah, so like I'm thinking about even this week, so catching up with Cheese, mm. Marquee sign of NRL, yeah. playing golf with Nathan, he's best yeah. player in the comp. Yeah, that's Mace fucked. comes through to this afternoon to bounce some ideas, talk about content. Proper OG. It yeah. is fun. And like the cool thing about like YKTR, it is kind of still got that tongue-in-cheek brand about it. So yeah. like the boy's been caught with drugs and yeah. it just kind of goes – <laughs> yeah, well, it's like it's under it, the rug it suits. Or we get in trouble. Yeah, it's just like I don't want to be in that position all the time because it's fucking draining. The coolest um, thing about it, though, bro, not the coolest thing about that, but like if you're if you're authentically yourself and the brand is authentically itself, that shit doesn't really matter because yeah. you're not pretending like you're some fucking polished media company who don't put a foot out of line. Because mm-hmm. then when you do, it's fucking awful. Whereas if we are just sort of the tongue in cheek knockabouts who have a red hot crack and then means somebody get into trouble, you kind of just be like, yeah, oh, the boys are suspended. They'll figure it out. Yeah. They'll learn their lesson. They come back. Yeah. And so one of us, that's going to be lesson, a big, so there you go. That's going to be a big change. You know, like you said, stakeholders and yeah, bro, it's, you know, it's different. A bit squeaky. You're going to have to go squeaky clean. I'm even like little things. Like I've got to kind of watch my language a little bit. Like I, I, I sort of yeah, like, we swear a lot, here, swear right? a lot and I kind of bro it up a little bit when I'm just fucking around. So, um, it's going to be a change of pace, but I'm pumped. And like, like I was able to sort of swindle. Um, I will, well, not swindle. If I want to do this role properly, I've got to be with the team as much as possible. Mm. So I will be traveling with the team a fair bit, not every away game, but um, we'll sort of target some key ones. Um, so I'll be, I'll be kicking around anyway. Yeah, get you back in some content. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, what's what's your plan beyond me? What's the go? Hiring? <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna look out, maybe hire out the intern job. Oh, like podcast. do it as an intern as a podcast. Yeah, but just lay low for the next little bit. Focus on our key shows. Yeah, I think like you said, like you've seen behind the scenes. So, like I see, like you've seen behind the scenes, but I see behind the scenes of numbers and behind behind and, the scenes. Yeah, <laughs> after stuff that actually you yeah. need to run a business and it hasn't always been smooth. So, just kind of just learning from our lessons. Like I think a lot of us got caught up in our own shit last year and yeah, thought we were way better than what we were. It's not um, even like thought we were better. It's kind of like it, when when success comes like that and we're so like – because we're a bit scattergun with a lot of ideas. Like we were just executing. So you'd like when the resources are there and you say, hey, I wanted to do this show, you go, yes, sweet, boom, go do it. Mm-hmm. Or, hey, um, these sponsors and this sponsor and this sponsor pulled out. You go, yeah, sweet, go record. Yeah. It's like in reality there should have been conversations about Why? how did that happen? <laughs> Why did that happen? <laughs> Whereas it was just easier. Not easier, but like when there's – Eight staff, two offices, multiple different fucking things going on in your life. Yeah. It's easier to kind of just be like, yeah, we'll be sweet. But yeah. And that's a, like you said, like success is sometimes we're putting band aids over shark bites. Fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> the next minute we're leaking blood and go, fuck. <laughs> and like then you look sin. back and like, oh, that's why yeah, we oh, fucked that's up. Right. Yeah. It's pretty obvious. Six months ago, the boys fucked that up. Ah, uh, where do you see YKTR going? Oh, to it's going to be weird moon, being back on the outside. Yeah, like the whole reason I moved, I was saying this morning, I got, I just got too bad FOMO. Like, yeah. So I, I was sort of like loosely working for the boys. I was just doing some writing stuff for probably six months before I moved over here. Um, and the whole reason I was moving over is just because it looked like too much fun. I was mm. getting pissed off that you, like you boys would do the footy companions and Luke, you'd like send me the link to make sure that it was working. And they'd be like, all right, bro, later. And he'd hang <laughs> up and you guys would just get blind and watch the footy. And I was like, <laughs> fuck. So I, th- I, th- I think I see why KTR the clothing brand, I just continuing to fucking ascend because I think we've gone through enough cycles on that now where you know what, works. what you know what works, but you also know what fits and feels comfortable. Like it's for the first, not the first time, but like we're all rocking it because we like it again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whereas there was a period there where we were sort of just, oh, we saw this overseas and it looks cool, make it. Or yeah. hey, this this color works with this one, do it. But it's like, oh, we wouldn't wear it. Val- yeah, um, Valentin Oz said that one time. He goes like, even ask around the office, like, do you actually even like this? Where a lot of times I just get bang. There's yeah. times in me and Luke put like two, three months collections in like half a day. Yeah. So we're back sort of focusing on A bit that. more considered, eh? Yeah, a bit more considered is, is a good way to put it. Um, not as wide where we sort of fucked up last time in terms of trying to do everything. Like, yeah. Let's just focus on what we do best. Um, obviously, you know, a couple of the shows we've got online, they, yeah. they, they seem pretty exciting. So uh, the sports arm of the business is where like, I, I'm telling you this – and I'm going to get fucking pissed off because in a year, two years, three years, it'll be like 
the Bleach Report of Australia in terms of there'll be four of these rooms, there'll be eight fucking shows, there'll be multiple talent, there'll be producers that are hired like high guns and there'll be players coming in past, present, future, coming and doing their thing and I think player management will be the final player management and whatever else we were talking about this morning is kind of going to be the final domino that falls on that. Yeah, do you, know, I, do you know what's interesting? And you like, because like, oh, normally I, I jump on and go, fuck, I'm going to do this. Yeah. But like I'm being a bit more considered as, as, yeah. as the word about what I put out there now. But you already know where our plans lie. So it'd be cool if you if it were executed. It will, bro. And then and that's going to be the point when I know. You'd be like that guy. You go, I played footy from back in the day. Yeah. And I'd be like, ah, oh, they're actually not that cool. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, they fucking losers, those guys. And then I'll be email you and be like, hey, bro, is uh, that job still there? Uh, <laughs> I need my weekends back, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah the weekends are gone now. For weekends are gone. But I'll, I'm too excited to be sad about missing the weekends. I'm going to miss fucking Sydney. 100%, but... It's a vibe, um, eh, Sydney? Bro, it's, it's been like... Everyone always talks about it being like a mad expensive city. It's like, it's only expensive if you do heaps of shit. And because it's so much fun, you end up doing heaps of yeah. shit. <laughs> so I'm going to miss Sydney, but obviously like I've, I've got... I get to go home and be with the old boy and fucking lock in, do my thing over there. And I love like... No one reps Auckland harder than me. <laughs> like I do <laughs> I do love that shit also. Um, yeah, I'm excited to go back and... Not just work, but live back there for a while. But I'll be over, bro. I'll be over every two seconds. Ponzi, Ponsonby Food Court, first yeah. cab off the rank? Yeah, Ponsonby Food Court, Pad CU. That'll be the number one. I'll go to Boston Bakery, uh, down in Blockhouse Bay. Bakeries, bro. That's yeah. Like- There's a, the the Carryland Bakery is like the OG one, but the Boston one, I'm sorry. Sorry, Hen. Um, the Boston one's where you get the mad chicken rolls. It's fucked out the gate. Yeah. And then obviously by Mount Smart, you got the the Beverly Hills of lunch bars on, the fucking, <laughs> on that strip, Rodeo Drive. So. Yeah. I oh, know I'll be looked after. Don't worry about that. All nice right, my fed. friend. Fuck, wish you nothing but success and thanks, happiness, bro. bro. So, right, bro. thanks for the journey, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. I'll be back.